Okay. This is question 10B from March 2016, paper 4, variant 2. And in this question, we are asked to find the volume of this box. Now, there is a bit of context from the earlier part of the question to this question. In the earlier part of the question, they asked us, they asked us to work out various pieces which we're going to cover. But basically they told us an important piece of information that these cylinders, okay, are cylinders of radius one centimeter. Okay, so the radius of this cylinder is one centimeter. So I'm going to draw some lines here of one centimeter. In fact what I'm going to do to make things extra clear, I'm going to take this diagram and I'm going to take the face of this diagram and I'm going to paste it so that it looks a bit bigger. Let's get rid of this pen mark. Okay, so I've just taken the diagram that we have there and I've just drawn it so that it looks a lot bigger so we can deal with it. But basically, we've got to find the volume of this box. So we calculate the volume of this box. Okay. So now, what we have is a prism. Okay. The shape that we have, the whole thing here, is a prism. And we know that the volume of a prism, the volume of a prism is given by the cross-sectional area times the height, or times the height, or times, you could say, the how deep the shape goes in. Okay, so it's the cross-sectional area, which is the area of this cross-section, okay, which is the area of this equilateral triangle, times how long the, the prism is. Okay, so we know the prism is 12 centimeters long. We know that this is an equilateral triangle at the face, but we don't know its area, and we have to find its area. That's our objective, to find the area of that triangle. Okay? So let's go ahead and try and do that now. So what we have, if you look at the face more clearly, I'm going to try and find the area of this triangle. There's a number of different strategies we could use, one of them being the following. We could join the radius, we could join the center to the point where the tangent, the side of the equilateral triangle is a tangent the circle at this point, you can join that together there, and I could do the same thing to the other two spaces where you have the same kind of thing happening. Okay, basically what will happen is, um, you can think of this in two ways. You basically have an angle at the center here, okay, 120. In fact, we could just extend these lines, and we could, oops, extend that line here, and make it be like when you drop the perpendicular down. The same from this side. Drop the perpendicular from the vertex to the opposite side. The same from this third side. We've actually now formed a number of right angle triangles because a tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. The tangent we know meets the radius at 90 degrees. So that, ang that angle over there is 90 degrees the same as the angle. And the same goes for the angle on this side. This is 90. This is 90. This is 90. And this is 90. So you have basically six right angle triangles. Okay, what do we know about these triangles? Well, the only thing we know is the radius of the circle at the center is 1. So the length from the center to the place where it meets Okay, the tangent is one unit. Okay, so now we can find the area, with that information now we can find the area of that triangle. One of those triangles. So let me just draw that triangle out here. Here we have that triangle, the right angle triangle. This side here is one centimeter. Um, this angle here, so now what we can know, what we know is this 
angle at the center, okay, we can think of it in two ways. This 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 center part okay, is split into six equal parts. Okay, so you have six equal angles, so one of those angles is going to be 360 divided by 6, which is 60. So I, I can say that this angle here is 60 degrees. Alternatively, I could have said that this angle at the end here is 60, and as we drop the perpendicular down from this equilateral triangle to the opposite side, that the angle has been bisected, so this is 30. So I could have said that this angle here is 30. So we have all the angles plus, you know, we have all the angles that we need. We have more than what we need in terms of angles. So we can work out the length of this side of the triangle. Okay, now this side of the triangle, okay, is, let me call it x for now. You can either use cosine 30 or sine 60, which is the same value. So sine 60, sorry, not cosine, and sine tan. You can either use tan 60 or tan 30. Why? Because we have the Supposing I'm considering 60 degrees. Just imagine I'm thinking about the 60 and not the 30. Degrees. So this is opposite and this is adjacent. So I can say that the tan of 60 is equal to the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 1. So x is tan 60. Now tan 60 is equal to the square root of 3. Okay. Just in case, when you, when you start doing A level maths, you'll be able to know some of these values directly. But right now, you probably won't believe me. So let me just make sure that you understand tan of 60. Make sure it's in degree mode, which it is, equals the square root of 3. Okay, I'm going to leave it in that form for now. So I'll say x equals the square root of 3. Okay, let's do this one these. This one. Okay. So x equals the square root of 3. So I know that this length here is the square root of 3. Okay, so I can say this length here is the square root of 3. So I have a few options here. I know this length is the square root of 3. So what I could do is I could say, okay, I can find the area of one of these triangles. The area of one of the triangles is going to be a half times the base, which is root, root 3 times the height, which is 1. So it's going to be root 3 over 2 is the area of one of those triangles. And we have all together how many of these triangles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the area or the cross-sectional area, I call it cross-sectional area, of this face of this prism is going to be 6 times root 3 over 2 which is equal to 3 times root 3. Okay? But that's not our answer. We want to find the volume. Okay, so the volume of the prism is a cross-sectional area. Okay, so I know that this area now is 3 root 3. And I know the length of the prism okay, goes all the way from there to the end there. Okay, that's this length there. It's 12. So the volume is a cross-sectional area, which is 3 root 3 times 12, which gives me 36, times root 3. Now, 36 times the square root of 3 will be my answer. So where are we with the calculation? So we have 36 root 3. 36 root 3, you can write it like that, it means times root 3. And if you want to give the answer to PSF, we have 62.3538, 62. 0.3538, okay, that's in centimeters cubed, okay, however, the answer should always be given to three significant figures unless otherwise stated, we end up with 62.4 centimeters cubed, and there we have our answer. Okay, thank you very much for your time.